Meeting is now being recorded. Hello and welcome to the Strategic Growth Council Transformative Climate Communities Program Round 2. Um, we have a webinar today about the Financial Assistance Application Submittal Tool and how to use this tool when um, submitting your applications for both planning grants and implementation grants. So I'm going to turn it over to Andrew Lawrence at the State Water Resources Control Board, and um, he will walk through uh, the FAST tool and um, also be available to answer questions later on if applicants should have any. Okay, thank you very much. Um, starting off, this is the FAST homepage. Uh, FAST is a web-based tool, so it's available 24-7. Um, we're going to go through how to create an account, and then I'll walk through both the implementation and planning applications. If you have any problems with the system, at the bottom of the home page here are a phone number and an email address that somebody will be staffing 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, and they'll be able to help you with any technical difficulties you have with the FAST system. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a FAST account by clicking on this button that says Create Account. And I'm going to search for my organization name. And as you can see, there's lots of options in here with organizations that have already used the system. If you search for your organization and nothing comes up, um, feel free to create a new organization by clicking on this button, and it will take you to a page that lets you enter the name and the address of your organization. I'm going to go ahead and choose this one, and then it's going to take me to a page that lets me enter my user information. So I'm just going to go ahead and type my name, my email, and my chosen username, and enter a password here, and then answer the security question. And then I'm going to hit Create User Account, and then you're going to get a confirmation page with the username and the password you just selected. And you should also get an email with that information as well. So we're going to go ahead and click this button that says Back to Login Page. And we're going to log in with the username and password we just created. And that's going to take you to the main menu here for applicants. So this is what you're going to see each time you log in. We're going to go ahead and start a new application here shortly. There's also links for your active applications. So after you've started the application, you can go ahead and click this active applications link, and that will take you to a list of everything that you're working on right now. And then after you've submitted your applications, you can still see them by clicking this link. And then there's also links for the processed and the inactive applications as well as links to update your user profile and password and organization down here. And then there's also some links at the bottom if you're having any problems with the system. There's some frequently asked questions, a user manual, uh, links to some how-to videos, as well as a link to contact the FAST help desk. So we're going to go ahead and start a new application by clicking this first link. And this is going to take you to a page um, of some system disclosures. We recommend using Internet Explorer, um, saving your work often. The system will log you out and time out after 90 minutes. And we recommend disabling your pop-up blocking software. And so to start your application, you just check these boxes saying you've read this and hit this Continue button here. And this page lets you select um, if you're going to be applying on behalf of your own organization or if you're working with somebody else and you're partnering 
with them and you're applying on behalf of somebody else's organization. So if you're doing that, you're going to choose this option and it's going to take you to a page that lets you search for that other organization that you're applying on behalf of. I'm going to go ahead and choose option one since I'm applying on behalf of my own organization. And then it's going to take you to a link or a list of all of the RFPs that we currently have in the system. So the ones you guys are going to want to pay attention to are these first two. So we're going to start with the implementation grant application. And then this is just a confirmation page to show that you chose the right RFP. You're going to hit this button to continue to the application. And then this is what the application will look like. The planning one looks very similar. It has these tabs across the top. Um, you can click this button and it'll take you to the funding program page. So on this general information um, tab, we're going to enter a project title and a project description. And at the top of each tab, you're going to see this pin and your project title. And the PIN number is your project identification number that gets assigned automatically by the system each time you start a new application. If you do need to contact the help desk for any reason, please include this PIN number so that we can look up the application you're having a problem with. Um, it'll save us a lot of time and hopefully get your issue resolved quickly. At the bottom of each tab, there are going to be a Save as Work in Progress button which I suggest you save your work often. And then also a next and on other tabs there will be a previous button that will let you navigate if you don't want to click on the tabs themselves. And then when you're all finished, you're going to click the preview submit button and it's going to take you to a read-only version of your application and then allow you to submit. And I'll go over that in just a moment. So on the next tab, this is the funding tab. So this tab, you don't really need to do anything. This box should be automatically checked for you. And it's just got a little information about the funding program. On the legislative information tab, you're going to select a primary district for your Senate, Assembly, and U.S. Congressional districts. And if the project spans multiple districts, you can choose multiple districts in these boxes in the middle. And if you don't know which district you're in, there's links over here on the right that you can search by your address or your zip code. So again, we'll just save our work as we go through. And then the next tab is the Contacts tab. So this lets you enter contacts that you're working with. Just enter an example here. And then just go ahead and hit the Save Contact button, and all of the contacts that you enter will show up in a list at the bottom here, and there's no limit to how many contacts you can enter. Uh, Andrew? Yes. Sorry, I'll just say on the contacts tab, um, if folks just want to put the their the primary, the lead, the contact information for the lead applicant, that's about all we need there. Um, we have in the application workbook a, pa a page for um, detailed information about all the project partners. So um, for you know our purposes, just the lead applicant contact information. Thanks. Yep. So the next tab is the questionnaire tab. So this is the bulk of the application. Um, this tab does have a little countdown clock at the top that starts counting down from 90 minutes. Like I mentioned before, the system will log you out if it gets to 90 minutes without any activity. And that clock resets every time you hit the Save as Work in Progress button. So again, I suggest saving often as you go through the application. 
So as we go through here, there's some instructions here, as well as questions about the project um, with these text boxes that have a limit character limit at the bottom, and it'll tell you how many characters you have remaining as you go through. And I would suggest um, no special formatting. If you do copy over the answers from Word or any other program, you know, clear any of the bold, underlined bullets. Um, a lot of that will not copy over into the text box here, but it may copy over some additional hidden formatting characters that will count against the character limit. So we just want to make sure that you have as much room as possible to answer the questions. Was there anything specific you wanted to talk about on this tab, Julie? Um, no, I think that that sounds about right. Um, we This is the max characters that are possible, so we wanted to give people as much space as possible. Um, and all of the questions do need to be completed for the application to be considered complete. Okay. That's it, yeah. So the next tab is the Attachments tab. So you can view a list of the attachments by clicking on this button. It should bring up a new window that has a list. And the attachment here, are, there's only two choices. You're going to choose one of these and then browse your computer for the file and attach the selected file. Um, it's very similar to attaching a file to an email. And then any files you've attached will show up here in a list. I'll upload a sample just so you can see. So I browse for a file, attach the file, and then they show up down here. Yeah, so this is um, uh, a point to make here. This is different than last year where we had a longer list of attachment categories um, and titles. And what we're asking people to do this year, as is um, explained in detail in our instructions document, is to essentially put all of the required upload, uh, uploadable documents into a zip file and um, upload the entire zipped file with all of the documents rather than individual files, which was um, quite difficult last year. So as you can see from the two examples, uh, there's the first um, funding scenario for 23 million and then the second funding scenario for 33 million and so applicants will upload the entirety of the documents required for each funding scenario in a zipped file. Okay, that's good. So then the last and final tab is just a status tab, so this just lets you know um, what the current status of the application is and what the most recent activity on that application is. So after you've entered all of the questions on the questionnaire tab and filled out everything else and uploaded your attachments, you're going to hit this preview submit button. And it's going to take you to this page that shows you everything that you've entered in the application. And if there are any missing questions, they'll show up red. As you can see, lots of mine are missing. And at the bottom, there's a button that says Application Completion Check. So you're going to click on that. And at the bottom, it's going to say, you know, the proposal appears complete. And you can submit it by entering your initials and hitting the Submit button. Or if there's something wrong with it that the system notices, there will be um, some red text, and it will have a list of anything the system thinks might be missing. Again, it's, it's, it'll show up that the answers are blank and red, but it'll still let you submit if they're red. So that's very important that you double check that you've answered all of the application questions. So we're just going to sign our application here by entering our initials and hitting Submit. And then it's going to take you to a confirmation page with your PIN number 
and you should also get an email with this information as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the planning application. We're going to start a new application again. Check these boxes one more time. We're going to choose our own organization to submit through. And then choose the planning grant. And confirm and continue. And then, as you can see, it looks very similar. Uh, same tabs. The main difference will be on the questionnaire tab. The set of questions will be different, but a very similar layout. And on the attachments tab, uh, only one choice for this one. So again, similar process, you know, fill everything out, answer all the questions, uh, upload your attachments, and then you'll hit the preview submit button. And again, do the application completion check at the bottom, and then submit your application. And like I mentioned before, any of your active applications will show up here. You don't have to complete the whole thing in one sitting. You can save your work and come back later. And anything you've submitted will show up here, so you still have a record of that. Is there anything else you wanted to add, Julia? No, I think that sounds good for the planning grant. Perfect. Uh, I think that's all I have to add. Okay, great. Well, um, as we said before, um, Andrew is available to answer questions if uh, applicants have them. And um, of course, you can also contact Myself, Julia Nagel at the Strategic Growth Council with questions about um, uploading or submitting uh, written narrative questions in FAST. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you.